Hi guys, welcome back to Talk Tuesday. So today for Talk Tuesday, I'm doing another true crime video, and I've been really trying to keep the true crime to Thursday, but this is a current, not a current event, but it is in the news right now because there was a huge press conference yesterday, Monday the, what is it? Monday the 5th yesterday there was a big press conference about this case and some new developments so i really really wanted to talk about it today because this is one of those cases i've just been fascinated in for a really long time this is also a celebrity case the case we're going to be talking about today is the case of natalie wood multiple famous people involved so this is very very interesting and i'm excited to get into it but before we start i have two announcements i have launched a new merch design in my store it says kendall ray is my school i wanted something that was sort of like magic Magic school bus so it has my logo on the bus it's such a cute design it's got like rocket boosters on it and it's just my favorite design ever so we're doing this limited edition this month so if you guys want to grab one pick one up because I'm not sure if this will be part of the permanent collection yet depends on how sales go so there's a link to my store in the description box second announcement is my friends at monk if you guys have been watching this channel at all you know about monk it's my favorite thing on the planet this is not sponsored but they offered to do something really nice for my viewers so I I totally took them up on it. We're gonna start doing a monthly monk giveaway on the first Talk Tuesday of every month. There's gonna be three winners and each winner will be winning 10 monks. So you get the entire Feel Nature line and the entire Feel Feel the Feelings line. If you don't know what Monk is, they are personal essential oil diffusers. This is the happy one. There is no chemicals, no tobacco. It's not a vape. You don't inhale it. It goes in your mouth and up through your nose, over your olfactory nerves or your, your nasal passages. It works like this. and it is another way to use essential oils. So amazing product that I just swear by. If you don't wanna enter the giveaway and you just wanna buy yourself some, you can use the code KENDALLFEB for 10% off. I'll leave all the information for that below, but let's go ahead and get into this case because this is such an interesting one. So not only did I wanna do this case for Talk Tuesday because it's in the news right now, people are talking about it, but also because my last video was about a drowning victim. And so it's fresh in everybody's mind. And today we are talking about another case of drowning. Last week, they announced that someone had come forward in the case, and in the press conference last night, they announced that the details around this night don't really add up to what we found. So Natalie Wood was born on July 20th of 1938. She was born in San Francisco, California. Her parents were named Maria and Nikolai, and they were both Russian immigrants who were born in Russia, but Maria had this dream of having her daughter be a famous actress. Natalie was a show pony from pretty much the moment she was born. She did 18 films as a child. We were living in Santa Rosa, which is a town in Northern California, and a film company came on location and they just needed some little girl to drop an ice cream cone. I couldn't read, of course. Um, I was only in kindergarten. Uh, so the lines were read to me and I, I learned them you know, just from hearing them. She first appeared in Happy Land in 1943, and then another big movie that she did was Miracle on 34th Street. Come right down. You know you shouldn't run around in other people's houses. You know better than that. But this is my house, Mommy. So what I asked Mr. Now, Kringle Susie. for, it is, it is, I know it is. My room upstairs is just like I knew it would be. Oh, you were right, Mommy. Mommy told me if things don't turn out just the way you want them to the first time, you still got to believe. Now, what's interesting about Natalie is she had a major fear of water, so much so that she was afraid to go in swimming pools or even wash her hair. And when she was younger, she actually went to a psychic and the psychic told her that she would become a big star one day and she did. But she also told her to beware of dark water. So that obviously was always a big factor in her life. And what's crazy is that her mom continued throughout her childhood to tell her don't forget, the psychic said you die in dark water, like would torture her with that. So great parenting skills. And then she had another incident with water when she was about 10 years old. She was on the set of The Green Promise and there was this bridge and this bridge was actually rigged to collapse for whoever was on it to fall off and fall into the water below. And Natalie was obviously really terrified of this. So her mom told her that the bridge was not rigged to go down, that she would just go across the bridge. So she trusted her mom and she did this and the bridge broke, she fell in, she broke her wrist and she was terrified of water after that. And I really question her mom a lot because her mom did not even take her to a doctor to get her wrist fixed. She literally just had to like let it heal on her own, a broken wrist, and she had a permanent scar on her wrist that they covered up with a bracelet. 
my fault. I warned you, I would not be left behind in Baracho. You left me no choice, so I had to stow away in Fate's car. And he cast you adrift. And if you had provided me with transportation as far as Gromit, where I could have caught a train, it never would have happened. Spoil? <laughs> Did he spoil me? No! <laughs> Well, I know that, but this is something that you can't... can't. You're not serious. Deadly serious. You're a sadistic fiend! The other person that we are going to be talking about in this story is named Robert Wagner. And if you haven't heard of him because he's older now, he was a famous actor. He's almost old Hollywood status. He was in The Happy Years. He was signed with 20th Century Fox. He was also in With a Song in My Heart, Prince Valiant, A True Story of Jesse James, A Kiss Before Dying, The Pink Panther, It Takes a Thief, Switch, Heart to Heart. He played one of the henchmen for Dr. Evil in Austin Powers. You, like an idiot, wanted to take over the world. And you don't realize there is no world anymore. It's only corporations. Silence number two. No. Oh, I've had enough of you pushing me around. He also has had a reoccurring role, and he also has had a reoccurring role on the CBS sitcom Two and a Half Men. So Natalie and Robert Wagner actually met when she was only 10 years old and he was 18. They met in the hallway when they were both working in the same studio on different projects. As soon as Natalie turned 18, the pair began dating. And what's interesting is the pair was actually set up by 20th Century Fox as, you know, just like a couple for publicity because that is so real. That is not a conspiracy. That is real. <laughs> Couples do get set up in Hollywood all the time, but they actually did fall in love. And Natalie from a very young age was saying he was the most gorgeous man I'd ever seen in my life and I will marry him one day. So the two got married in 1957 and they actually ended up getting divorced a few years later. And she got remarried and so did he. She actually married a producer named Robert Gregson and that was in 1971. They actually did have a daughter together and her name was Natasha. However, Natalie ended up leaving him and went back with Robert Wagner and he left his spouse too. And the two of them linked back up and they actually got remarried. That is a lot of work to go through a full divorce and then come back together and get remarried. And they actually had their own daughter together named Courtney once they were back together and the two of them raised Natasha and Courtney as a little family and they had this obsession with water again which is so weird. They actually got married in a friend's yacht off Catalina Island and she actually sent Robert a little note on the day they got married that said dearest here's to smooth sailing for us from now on. So they got married on the ocean and they actually fell in love on the ocean as well. Wagner in his book in 2008 said that he saw her one night on his boat that they were having dinner on a boat lit by candlelight and that's when he knew he was going to fall in love with her. So water was always a thing for them. They even had sort of a logo and it was like two birds above each other, like two seagulls. Um, so the ocean was always a thing for them even though Natalie was terrified of the water. Now we are going to jump to the weekend of Thanksgiving of 1981. They had actually bought a boat. They had their own boat and it was called the Splendor which was named after one of the movies that Natalie did. Welcome to Splendor. This uh, will start here in Natalie's room. So this is where she would have come to that fateful night. This door right here is the, where she would have gone to to go out to the swim step where the dinghy was tied. Each of the staterooms has their own bathroom. This is hers. Um, they had their own little logo. You'll see it more up on, in the wheelhouse. This is the main salon. This is where they would have had the argument would have started. At the time, Natalie was working on a movie with Christopher Walken, and it was called Brainstorm. And Robert was actually doing his own project at the time called Heart to Heart, and the three of them decided to go on this little boat weekend together. Now, jealousy had always been an issue in Natalie's relationship with Robert. He had always been jealous. He, I guess, didn't have the confidence in their relationship. He always thought she was gonna leave him for someone she was working with, and Christopher Walken was a very good looking guy back then. Um, so he was very, very jealous of him and their relationship. They built up quite a friendship working on a show together and Robert was very threatened by this. And the whole time that they were on the boat, Natalie and Christopher Walken were having a great time together, laughing, joking, and Robert Wagner was just seething. He was so jealous. And that night they docked at Avalon and they went offshore and drank a ton, the three of them. They came back to the boat 
I'm not sure what Christopher Walken did. He was off on his own, maybe in his own little room on the boat. But the two of them started fighting. And multiple people saw this, and it's accounted for that they were arguing a lot. And it seemed like Natalie was actually the instigator from some of the witness perspective, which these are witnesses that were on other boats near them. So it's kind of hard to say how much they could have actually seen. That night they were specifically fighting because Robert wanted to move the boat somewhere else. And he actually did have a captain, uh, Captain Davern and he wanted to move the boat, but it was really, really late at night, it was dark, and there was actually a storm. So Natalie was fighting with him because she just wanted to keep the boat where it was. I mean, she was terrified of water, so the idea of traveling around on water in the dark really freaked her out. So that's what they were fighting about that Friday night. The fight continued. She got so upset she wanted to get off the boat and go back to shore. So she asked Captain Davern, who was their employee, to take her back to shore, and he did. He took her back to shore, and the two of them got a hotel. She got two separate rooms. He stayed up with her and drank that night, and she was talking about all her issues with Robert, and she had planned to try to get off the island, but it was late at night. She couldn't get a flight. There was bad weather, so she was like, I'll just stay here in this hotel, and I'll leave in the morning. I think she was just about done with Robert's jealousy. It was driving her absolutely insane. The next morning, she woke up, and she was in a better mood. She said, let's go back on the boat. Let's see if I can smooth things over. I can make a good breakfast and you know maybe we won't have any more issues with this so they did that she went back to the boat but later that day she ended up going back to a bar with Christopher Walken Christopher Walken and Natalie they had gone ashore to a restaurant which was the only restaurant on that part of the island the tension was building throughout the whole weekend of Robert Wagner being jealous of Christopher Walken Robert Wagner and myself we joined Christopher and Natalie at the restaurant for dinner. We had dinner, we had drinks. So Robert Wagner showed up and he apparently was really upset. Um, according to witnesses, he was angry because the two of them were acting like they were having more fun without him. They were almost ignoring him, having a great time together, and he was just insanely jealous. When they left, they were super intoxicated, so intoxicated that the bar owner had to call the harbor master and tell them, hey, Look, there's these celebrities, it's Natalie Wood, Robert Wagner, and Christopher Walken. They're like drunk as hell. They're coming your way, just so you know. So they got back onto the boat. And when they first got back onto the boat, they went into something called the salon room. So it's just kind of like a lounge area. And Natalie actually started making a pot of tea. Uh, everything seemed to be fine. And then according to Captain Davern, this is hard because Captain Davern waited years before coming forward with this information. He completely went along with Robert Wagner's version of events until he finally decided to get the courage to come forward, but that makes him a really problematic witness because like, why didn't you say something sooner? But according to him, Robert randomly got so angry that he picked up a wine bottle. That Robert Wagner had picked up the bottle of wine and smashed it right in front of Natalie and Christopher on the coffee table. And then asked Christopher Walken if he was trying to fuck his wife. Christopher stood up and he went directly to his stateroom. So obviously Natalie got really upset because that's not only just ridiculous, but it's embarrassing to her probably. So she left the room, he follows her, Christopher Walken goes elsewhere, he doesn't want to be part of this. And according to Davern, he could hear them fighting so loudly that it sounded like someone was being assaulted. That night, Robert Wagner, Natalie Wood, a uh, ferocious fight going on. You turned up your music so they would not think in your mind that you were eavesdropping or trying to hear them, but you did hear them. Yeah, yes I did. Um, Captain Davern actually went down to the room, he knocked on the door, and Robert Wagner answered the door and he said, go away. Then the arguing went on to the aft deck. And multiple witnesses heard them fighting from other boats, and then they all have the same story. Suddenly the fighting just stopped. Moments later, everything became silent. So I thought that maybe they were making up and maybe they were going to go to bed and that was going to be the end of it and just i'm going to go to the f deck and just see if everything's okay robert wagner was standing there leaning his back against the back of the boat facing the facing the boat and he said that uh, that natalie was missing and would i go search the boat and he just said she's gone she's missing what the hell off of a boat that is such a weird thing to randomly come up with to say at first i just was so struck by that, so odd. But they actually found that the boat's dinghy, which a dinghy, if you don't know, is like a little lifeboat that they tie 
onto a boat in case you have to evacuate the boat or like but oftentimes it's mostly used just to get back to shore like to go drink at a bar or something so this thing is tied to the boat natalie was nowhere on the boat i looked in christopher's stateroom i looked in the em other empty stateroom and she wasn't there so i said to robert wagner he said to me he said well he said the dinghy has gone too just i just knew that natalie was so deathly afraid of the water not really capable of taking that boat by herself. So Robert said, you know, I'm sure she just went to the town, she went to a bar or something, let's not freak out. And Captain Davern was like, well, let's turn on the searchlights, let's call, make a call that we have a missing passenger on the boat. I, I thought, well, let, let, let's turn on the searchlight and let's just see if we can see her. He said, no. And Robert Wagner was like, no, 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 we don't want to do that. We're not gonna do that. He actually opened up a bottle of liquor and had Captain Davern sit down with him and drink for an hour. After an hour, Captain Davern's like, dude, she's not back, we haven't heard from her. I have got to make this call. So he's like, okay, yeah, I guess we should probably make a call now. He knew about her being missing at about midnight. The call didn't come in that she was missing to the Coast Guard until 1.30 a.m. Every time that there is an odd lack of reporting or a hesitation to report someone missing, there's something sketch going on. That's such a red flag. So the next day, Natalie Wood's body was found by a lifeguard and the dinghy was found about a mile from where her body was found. Natalie Wood was buried Wednesday in a quiet ceremony. The services were attended by close friends in the Hollywood community. Frank Sinatra, Sir Lawrence Olivier, Rock Hudson, Gene Kelly, Fred Astaire, Gregory Peck. At the last moment, Robert Wagner bent to kiss the casket in farewell. She was found in a heavy coat, a nightgown, and wool socks. Now this is really weird because she's a celebrity. Like, is she gonna go to town, get on a dinghy, and go to town in her nightgown and socks? Like, this makes no sense. So this was pretty much immediately ruled an accidental drowning. The story that they believed was that she wanted to get off the boat, maybe she was mad at Robert, wanted to, you know, get a little break from him. So she took the dinghy, untied it herself, got in it and left. And this made no sense because first of all, she's terrified of water. This is the middle of the night, like midnight, and it was stormy. Why would she leave with a jacket, socks, and a nightgown in the middle of the night? And what's also weird is she never asked Captain Davern to untie the boat for her. Like the night before, literally the night before, she asked him to take her to town and he did. Why wouldn't she just ask him to do that again? When the medical examiner looked at her body, there were fresh bruises on her. The coroner believes that they were probably made by someone else and they happened before she drowned. There was an autopsy report that showed that she was drinking probably several glasses of wine. I'm sure she was pretty intoxicated. But even then, would you just get in a boat if you were that terrified of water? Like I've done things when I'm drunk that are stupid, but I've never done something that I'm like terrified of or have absolutely no knowledge about doing. Her family kind of had has mixed feelings on this. Her daughter does not believe that Robert Wagner had anything to do with it. She's maintained to this day that she believes he's innocent, that it was an accident, and he continued to care for her her whole life. After her mother's death, Natasha continued living with her stepfather, actor Robert Wagner, who treated her as his own daughter from the age of one. He is the greatest. I, I love him so much. There's obviously so much mystery surrounding yes. that night. In 2011, the case was reopened. Mm -hmm. there, there's, there's the ship captain who came out and said, right. your parents were arguing. Yeah. He thinks your, your stepfather was involved. So you don't think your stepfather had anything to do with it? Oh, I know he didn't. What do you think happened that night? I think it was an accident. Her sister, on the other hand, has always believed it was Robert Wagner. Somebody's lying. Somebody hurt her. Somebody's hurting all of us. Lana Wood believes Natalie's now 87-year-old husband, Robert Wagner, is not telling everything he knows. Stand up and tell me the truth. I know things go bad. I know people lose their tempers. I know bad things happen when you don't want them to. So stand up and tell me that. Robert had a different theory. In his book, he said that he thinks that she was trying to tie the dinghy closer to the boat because it was banging against the boat, making too much noise and she couldn't sleep. So she went out there to tie it closer to the boat. Uh, yeah, right. She's a celebrity who has her own captain to do these types of things. Like, why would she go out in there and do this? So he claims that she went onto the swim step, tried to untie the dinghy, slipped on moss and fell in the water and died. Her sister says that there is no way that Natalie would have gotten in a dark boat that late at night. There's absolutely no 
no way. Like she was terrified, especially of dark water. And doesn't it make you think of psychics a little differently when you hear that they predicted that not only would she be famous, but she would die in dark water. So like I said, the death was ruled an accidental drowning. There was never really too much going on with it after that. It wasn't making a lot of news after that because it was kind of just a dead end. Everyone sort of accepted that she just died in the water. I mean, that's what her daughter believes. She drowned, it was all an accident. But then in 2011, Captain Davern came forward and told the truth and said that they had been fighting. He smashed a wine bottle. There was so much fighting that he thought there was assault going on. So he comes forward with all this information and it really switches everything up. Then in 2012, the coroner actually stated that she looked like a victim of assault and they changed the status from accidental drowning to drowning and other undetermined factors. After that, Robert Wagner was considered a person of interest mainly because he was the last person seen with her. There's always been this kind of cloud of suspicion around him since then, but last night they announced there were new witnesses coming forward and that the details of Robert's story just do not add up. We, op we, op we op took a look at this case back in 2011 and uh, that's the one, really the only press conference we did. And from that press conference, we ended up with like uh, well over 100 people came forward with information about this case. We end up identifying witnesses or people who had uh, information about the case who had never come forward. So they uh, end up coming forward and, and telling us their story. And that's one of the things we've run into uh, this case and in many cases is like uh, people don't think their information or what they know might be might not be important. Well it was in this case and uh, it's helped us recreate some of the timeline and what happened on that weekend and then uh, right up to the point where Natalie Wood ends up uh, going into the water. We interviewed a lot of new people and uh, people on the island, people who were mo moored near the boat uh, uh, that night or that weekend, people who had a uh, knew the couple or had knowledge of uh, what was going on that weekend, so it's been extremely helpful. Lieutenant, what's the difference between a person of interest and a suspect? Well, you know, this is a suspicious death investigation. It's not a murder investigation. So he's not a suspect of, uh, of like a, committing a murder or a crime. We're just trying to figure out what happened. In the United States of America, we can't, you know, he can, he can say, uh, no, I don't want to talk to you. So, and that's his right, and we understand that. And we've tried to talk to him. And so far, he's, uh, uh, didn't want to, he doesn't want to talk to us. They just want to talk to Robert, and he has refused to cooperate with them. So don't get confused. There's no charges yet. They just believe that they're closer to understanding what actually happened. The biggest part that's not adding up for them is that no one heard a splash of her falling in the water, and no one heard the dinghy start up and leave. The whole story just really makes no sense, and I really hope that they figure out what actually happened. Because in my opinion, the fact that they were arguing like that, obviously in a drunken rage, he could have done something to her out of anger. Very, very interesting story. Um, no one quite knows. There's so much confusion around this, but I would love to know your thoughts on it. What do you think actually happened that night? Christopher Walken has remained extremely silent about this. I want to know your thoughts, so leave them in a comment below. If you liked this video and you want to see more videos like this, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. But that's it for me today, guys. I will see you next time. Bye.